Can you guys believe that I showed up on time and on schedule for this vlog? Are y'all proud of me? <laughs> if you've been around here in my last vlog, um, I had been in a MIA for a little while and I kind of explained why and kind of like the struggle bus that I get on in regards to vlogging. So I'm just super excited that I'm here with y'all today. We're going to share a lot of um, interesting things that are going on with little Isabel. Uh, I want to give y'all an update on how she is doing because I feel like it will be a resource to other parents who are kind of walking this road with special needs kids who might have delays and all those types of things. But first I want to share something with y'all that I'm so excited about. I received these in the mail a couple days ago. Look at these. Photo albums. So this all started with, uh, you know, our grandbaby Brantley just turned one and I wanted to try to create um, a special tradition that I do for him every year. I'm not in a place right now where I can play the typical grandma role where I have him come and spend the night every Friday night or we go on play dates once a week or anything like that just because we already have a handful of life ourselves. Uh, but I wanted to find some type of tradition that I could carry on for him year after year. And I came up with the idea of doing a photo album um, to just kind of go through his previous year. But it just so happens that uh, a awesome company called Popsa reached out to me and they actually offer these photo albums that I had been wanting to create for Brantley. And so I was like, heck yes, I will do that. I'm very excited about it. Let me take you through and show you why I love these Popsa photo albums and why I think you'll love them too. So first things first, the app is extremely user friendly. So you actually can link it to your social media accounts so that it can easily transfer your favorite photos. And then all you're going to do is select your photos that you want to go into the photo album. And then it's actually going to automatically customize um, the photo album for you depending on the pictures, the amount of pictures that you've chosen, the layout of the pictures, etc. So you absolutely can go in there and customize it however you want. You can add text, you can choose the color scheme, uh, there's photo editing options. I mean, it's really all up to you on what you want the design to look like. Again, this is something that I've been wanting to do for quite some time is just to create a photo album documenting um, both of the girls' adoption journeys. Again, I could have put a lot of text and a lot of wording and all of that uh, throughout the pages. I just chose to keep it simple and kind of let the pictures tell the story in and of itself. So this is going to be a keepsake that we can keep as a family for the rest of our lives to always go back and, and just look and see where these girls came came from, uh, the life that they lived before they came into our family. So it is just a treasured item for sure. In the description box below, I will leave a link where you can use my code FELTS25 so that you can receive 25% off of your order when you go and create your first photo album. Um, I highly recommend that y'all give it a try. I do feel like this is going to be something that you will be very glad that you put in just a few minutes of your day to create a special photo album to document all the special happenings going on in your family's life. Okay, now that we've got the fun stuff out of the way, let's talk about how our little Isabel is doing. So I'm going to try to make this as concise as possible, but it's kind of a complex situation. And so forgive me if I get a little bit long-winded, but I'm just praying that the Lord puts the families, the eyes in front of this video that are searching for answers that are maybe losing hope and helping their child or helping themselves um, struggle with some challenges that are, like I said, just very complex and very difficult to walk through. And sometimes you kind of get to the point where you feel like you have no answers. But you know, that's not where God wants you to stay stuck, right? He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. Um, and you know, let me just, let me just go ahead and preface this by saying, um, I had someone on Facebook, 
uh, last week. It was a totally different subject, but we were talking about a very controversial issue and I brought God into it. And uh, someone chimed in and said, you know, like, I love your family, Ashley, and I love all the things that you're doing with these girls, but do you have to interject God into every topic and everything that you talk about? And they are a non-believer, and so I don't really expect them to understand why God is always at the heart of everything that goes on within our family, down to how we are choosing to walk this road with Isabel and even Micaela and walking through, again, these complex situations that we have never walked through before. And so we're really walking through them blindly. And that is why we have to rely on the Lord to lead us and direct us and just kind of impress upon us when we are to make steps in whichever direction that may be. So if you are new here, um, Isabel came into our family about three years ago. It actually will be three years in August. Uh, we adopted her um, from China. Um, the first five and a half years of her life were pretty yucky. Uh, lots of trauma, neglect, abandonment. Um, she was very malnourished. All of these things, that environment that she endured for so long has created so many internal challenges um, that we have just steadily been having to walk through. So yeah, so there's just a little backstory on um, kind of the challenges that she faces. Um, back in December 2019, we started her on the NEMCHEC protocol. Let me tell you briefly about the NEMCHEC protocol because really all of this update revolves around the protocol. So let me preface this and say that I am not a medical professional. Um, if you are interested in this protocol, please do your own research. Please feel free to talk to your pediatricians, your general practitioner, whoever it is that uh, you rely on for medical advice and direction. Um, please feel free to reach out to them. I am just going to share with you what I know about the protocol, what we have experienced, and I hope that I can relay it in a very concise but educated form format. Okay, I have an Izzy. You can't see her. She's right here. She's didn't sleep well last night, so she's very crabby. So I'm just going to sit here and hold her while we talk. Uh, but if you see hair, hair popping up or weird noises, it's just Isabel right here. Um, so the Nemchek protocol was created by Dr. Nemchek. Um, he's in Buckeye, Arizona. He is a very well-known, educated doctor. Um, and he created this protocol many years ago at first for kids with autism, but it has now been proven to help so many kids and adults who are on the spectrum, ADD, ADHD, IBS, PTSD, developmental delays, nonverbal, so many aspects. Um, so it can really, I'm going to be talking about it with Isabel today, who is a child, but please know that if you struggle with any of these symptoms or any of these challenges whether you are a child or an adult it absolutely can be very very beneficial for you too but essentially the protocol just involves three all natural ingredients it is it involves extra virgin olive oil high quality omega fish oils and inulin which is a prebiotic fiber or rifaximine which is another prescribed antibiotic so the NEMCHEC protocol, it's a very, very simple, very simple to understand, a very simple protocol to administer day to day. Um, it is essentially going to restore the integrity of the gut, uh, which then is going to allow the brain to heal and repair itself. So the inulin, which is part of the NEMCHEC protocol, is going to, it's a prebiotic fiber. It goes straight into the small intestine and it is, it's just going to, again, heal your gut. So talking about a lot, a lot of kids who have autistic behaviors or maybe they've been um, diagnosed with autism, we have not had her diagnosed uh, with autism, nor we probably won't ever, um, just because she has the, the background, she has the blindness, she has a lot of other things that factor into her behaviors. And so just to, it just wouldn't be fair to just straight up look at her behaviors and say, yep, you're autistic. However, she checks all the boxes. Yeah. 
So, <laughs> she's hollering down here. Um, and so, Dr. Namchek says that, you know, a lot of these kids with these symptoms of autism, uh, they are very zombie-like, they're unresponsive, um, they're not engaging, uh, they're very sensitive, obviously, to sounds and new places and all of those things. Um, it's because of the um, overabundance of propionic acid in their gut. That propionic acid essentially puts the kid to sleep almost. Um, so he said that if you're unsure if your kid is autistic or if you have had a diagnosis of autism and you start them on the NEMCHEC protocol, within a few days, you should start noticing a big difference. He calls it an awakening. They just, their bodies start waking up. Um, and so we definitely experienced that within Isabel within a few days of starting her on the protocol back in 2019. Um, the other two components of the protocol are omega, high quality omegas and extra virgin olive oil. Again, you're just going to administer them to them once a day. It's very, very simple, very easy to do. These two products are going to help restore um, again, the integrity of brain health, and it's going to help the brain just repair itself. A lot of these kids and adults um, have a lot of these challenges because of cumulative brain injuries. Um, it can be physical, you know, concussions, you know, hitting their head a lot and things like that. It can also be uh, mental and emotional factors that play into causing these cumulative brain injuries such as trauma, neglect, abandonment, all those things and obviously we know that Isabel has um, experienced all of that so we know that those oils are going to be very beneficial in restoring her brain health and just helping her brain to become healthier so if you remember when we brought Isabel home uh, she bit her hands 24 7 um, she was looking for input um, some say it's just you know they want to kind of feel pain and discomfort just to know that they're alive um, sensory challenges whatever I, I don't know what the exact reason is obviously because she can't speak and tell me but she had this incessant need to have input and that was in the form of biting her hands. When we brought her home, we gave her some arm braces and very quickly uh, she quit biting her hands. But to, you know, you take away one behavior and when her body is screaming that I need this input, I need this input, she's gonna find another way to give herself input. And so what she then started doing was hitting herself, like hitting her face really hard, like nonstop. It's all up here. Um, and if she can't hit her face, she's going to clap her heels together and, and take her heels and hit all along her shins. Uh, she's going to bite her lip very incessantly so that it becomes infected and very yuck. Um, so there's just all these different forms of input that she is just constantly, her body is screaming that it needs. So that honestly has been the biggest challenge in just getting her body to a comfortable state to where it doesn't need those harmful inputs you know we can we can give her input and we can teach her different ways that can help kind of release that anxiety to where she's feeling like she needs input in healthier ways um, but it's very hard to get it under control so we were in a very dark season. Her mood was very hard to get her regulated. Once she started crying, she wouldn't stop crying. Um, she battled thrush a lot in her mouth. Um, bowel movements were terrible. I mean, like all the things. So within the first few days of starting the protocol, I started noticing her hands were coming out of her weighted blanket and she wanted to explore. She wanted to touch a toy. She wanted to entertain something else other than just her hands under her weighted blanket. Then I noticed her face started flinching and like all these things started coming to life and like that protocol was a godsend for her. It's exactly what her body need. And so over the course of about a year and a half, uh, she, you know, we would still have dips and we would still have lulls, but we had a lot more good seasons than we did bad seasons. And the good seasons were definitely outweighing the bad seasons. Uh, we even got to a place where she was sitting on her own. She could explore on the floor. She didn't hit herself. I mean, she might would do this very gently and then be done. Um, her mood was very regulated. Like it was, she was a different child. It was amazing. 
Um, and then this past, I noticed about November that she kind of plateaued and it wasn't that she was doing terrible. She was still, you know, doing pretty well, but I just noticed then things were kind of plateauing. And um, I just kind of kept an eye on it. I didn't change anything with her products or anything like that. And then February came, uh, February of 2021, and she just hit rock bottom and went into a deep regression. Um, she needed the weighted blanket. She was crying a lot. I mean, if you weren't sitting right beside her, she was gonna scream. Uh, you couldn't put her in her car seat to go anywhere because she would cry off and on the entire way. Um, she was back to hitting herself very terribly, and if she couldn't hit herself, she was back to biting her lips. So essentially in February, a few months ago, she kind of like reverted back to where she was before we started the protocol. So I knew that I needed to see what was going on because clearly her body, it, it was needing a change, it was needing something different, and I kind of had this idea of what I knew needed to be done. So with all the research that I've done on the protocol and keeping myself educated, I knew that the doctor had said that a lot of people who are over, who are more like teenagers and adults, inulin is not going to be very effective for them and that they are possibly going to need an antibiotic called rifaximine. And, um, and he said even some kids who start on the protocol, little kids like Isabel who start on the protocol and have great results, they eventually can get to a point where the inulin's just not very effective on their gut anymore. And he calls it inulin failure. And at that point, once you've kind of ruled everything out and, and you've really kept track of like her behaviors and the dosage amounts and all these things, if you're still not seeing any um, results, Rifaximine is where you need to go. And so I kind of knew in my gut that that was where we needed to go. Um, so from February 2021 till May, um, it, was, it was very challenging. Very, very challenging for everyone in the family. For little Isabel, I mean, it's just, you just hate seeing your child so dysregulated and just not functioning properly and this is just not a way that god intended her little body to live out her life um and so i got to a point where i was like okay let me look into this rifaximine again and see how can i get a prescription for it and it's quite funny because this is where where again god kind of interjects himself right when i need it i was um one morning is in may isabel was fussing in her bed it was morning time so it was time for her to get up but like every other morning for the past five months she woke up screaming and crying and i just did not want to go get her out of bed um you know you just you just you just hate seeing your child like that um and then it's very challenging on yourself and you know we we as mamas we as parents don't always handle it in the most graceful way possible um so then we carry the guilt that we're letting their actions and their behaviors that they can't control dictate our mood and um dictate the atmosphere in our house and like all of those things so i was just really dealing with frustration at the my wits end um, I didn't want to get her out of bed because then all she would do is sit on the couch and just cry and even if she was happy on the couch under the weighted blanket like that's still not a way to live to be under a weighted blanket sitting on a couch almost 24 7 right so I was just very fr frustrated um, I had a friend who was, um, again, had a child on the protocol and actually kind of had almost the exact same storyline as Isabel with the protocol where they started out great and then kind of had a decline and she knew that it was time for Rifaximine. Uh, she actually called me that morning because she had just been to see Dr. Nemchek and she said, I got to tell you all that Dr. Nemchek told me. And so we talked on the phone for a good hour, hour and a half, and she just told me story after story after story that Dr. Nemchek shared with her of, you know, a man who went 33 years of his life being nonverbal, and within two years of starting the protocol, he started speaking. Um, 
my friend's husband who had PTSD for years and years and years and years and years from being in the military and experiencing some difficult situations, um, his PTSD has tremendously improved in just four months. Um, like I could just go on and on and on about all the success stories um, that I've seen, that I've heard, I've experienced with Isabel. We have seen what it can do for Isabel. Um, and she honestly, I mean, that phone call was exactly what I needed. It was to give me hope. Um, and I do believe the Lord used her to just kind of be like, Ashley, your gut is right. Your little girl, she needs this antibiotics. This is the next step for you. Like, come on, let's go. And so talking with my friend, that was really the push that I needed and that encouragement to say, you're right, mama, let's go, let's get it done. So I called my pediatrician and I do have an amazing pediatrician um, that wrote a prescription for Isabel for the Rifaximine. And um, she started on it, it was like a 14 day dose. And within, I don't know, five or six days, she started waking up just like she did back in 2019 when she first started the protocol. Her hands started coming out of the weighted blanket. She started laughing more. She was picking up toys. She was responding more to what we were saying. And then all of a sudden, she started sitting up on the couch and coming down off the couch. And then we were able to get rid of the weighted blanket and replace it with just a, a normal size baby blanket. And she was fine with that. By the end of the 14 day dosage amount, I mean, she was like, I mean, I mean, just laughing and being silly and uh, crawling up and down off the couch and scooting around on the floor, laying on her belly. Like she hates to be on her belly and she hates to get on all fours in like the crawling position, but she's been doing that. Anytime we lay her on the floor, that's the position she'll go to, which is amazing. So if you're like me, um, you're like, okay, well, so she needs rifaximine. It's obviously working for her, but how do you know her body's not going to get to a place where it's not responding anymore to rifaximine because that's what it did with the inulin. And so I studied up on it. I, I listened to Do Dr. Nemchek's uh, YouTube videos, all his research, research from other entities as well. Um, and here's how I can answer that. Um, the rifaximine was created about 30 years ago for um, patients who had a liver disease and their livers were producing ammonia, like straight up ammonia. And if they didn't keep that under control, obviously they are going to die because their body, you know, our bodies are not intended to produce ammonia. So they created rifaximine. And these, these patients who have this liver disease and whose bodies are producing that, need this rifaximine every single day of their life to keep that um, small intestine um, normalized. And so research after research has shown that your body doesn't um, become, are you laughing or crying? Your body doesn't become resistant to the rifaximine no matter how little or how much you use it. Um, so that was very uh, that was very good to see. Dr. Nemchek again backed it up. He's had patients on it for years and years and years, and their patient his patients are doing amazing on it. So to know that we've got something on our hands that her little body will not build a tolerance to and will remain effective even if she has to use it every day for the rest of her life brings me such a sigh of relief, right? So I attribute much of her success, much of her progress um, lately to the NEMCHEC protocol. Okay, aside from that, let's see. Y'all know that Isabel has had three hip surgeries, bilateral hip surgeries that have landed her in the spica cast three different times. Um, she did need the surgeries and Shriners did an amazing job on, um, on fixing her hips essentially. However, it turns out <laughs> it's a little more complex than that because she is still able to pop her hips in and out of socket. She only does it when she gets angry. She's laughing at that. She only does it when she gets angry or uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, and it's the sickest thing you'll, you'll feel. Like, it's so funny to see Stan who really nothing ever bothers him. But if she's sitting on, her, on his lap and she goes to popping her hips, he, he all but throws her across the room. Like, oh my God, stop it, Izzy. 
it's disturbing but it she only does it at will and it doesn't seem to bother her so pretty sure she probably has a genetic syndrome a genetic condition that is allowing her to do this eventually we'll get some genetic testing done but you know we'll do that when we feel like it's necessary or needed um, so because of her hip surgeries last summer she was in a spica cast all summer didn't get to swim uh, we put her in the pool um, a few weeks ago and she loves it um, y'all know that we have used the floaty um, the ring floaty that goes around her neck is called an otteru we used that the past couple years and she really loves it especially since she loves input around her chest and her, her face and all of that um, but she's now too big for that and so um, we got one that's called Waterway Babies, and I will put a link below, so if you wanna go check it out. Uh, but she loves it. She comes to life in the swimming pool. Um, it is so good to see her hands free, to see the blanket gone, kicking and flailing everywhere and just giggling and laughing. It's really the cutest thing. We discovered the other day, she was a little bit crabby in the swimming pool, so we had the um, the water hose out and Jackson decided to put it on the mist spray and just kind of spray it on Isabel and she cackled so much. So that's kind of her new favorite thing to do in the swimming pool is to, uh, we just kind of actually prop the water hose sprayer up on the concrete and just have it going over Isabel the whole time and she thinks it's the best thing ever. So Isabel has a neuro condition and she has like this uh, massive brain matter that sits uh, midline right here. And because of that, uh, she formed an extra tooth. So she had the two front teeth and then one tooth right in the middle, right? And so back in February, all three of those two teeth became loose at one time and she lost all three teeth. In fact, they were so wiggly um, that when I took her to one of her therapy sessions, one of the therapists who loves to pull teeth, <laughs> she pulled her teeth. Uh, she pulled two of the teeth, I believe, and then a few days later, finally, uh, the third tooth came out. And so she is snaggle tooth right now, and it's the cutest thing. So when her therapist pulled that last tooth, you know, it was bleeding some, and so they took a big wad of tissue and put it in her mouth. And Isabel loved the pressure. She could bite down on it and love the pressure. So the wet all the way home from her therapy session that day, Isabel sat in her car seat, happy as a lark, with a big wad of tissue sticking out of her mouth. And I was like, oh, if y'all have been around for a while, y'all know we have gone through some contraptions and all kinds of phases with Isabel that are just so very interesting to say the least. Um, so we got home and when I would take that tissue out of her mouth, she would start to cry. I was like, okay, we can't, we can't be going around with a big wad of tissue, you know, out of your mouth. And plus it's not safe because once it starts getting wet, she would swallow it. So I had a pacifier and I put a pacifier in her mouth and she took right to it. She doesn't suck it. She just kind of likes to bite on it. It just gives her, again, gives her that input that she needs. And y'all might see in some of the videos where she didn't have the passy in her mouth, but she had the little pacifier clip, the little beads in her mouth. Again, very interesting look, but it's input that she's needing. And what I have learned is that Isabel's gonna go through these phases and I can't force her to come out of the phases. Um, it's very hard to find that line, that balance of challenging her and helping her to get out of her comfort zone and seeing that she's gonna be okay if she doesn't have that passy. She's gonna be okay if she doesn't have that blanket. But I, at the same time, I can't force it because clearly her body is needing it right now. And what I know and what we have seen with Isabel over the past three years is that she's gonna go through these phases and when she is ready, she will come out of the phases. So soon enough, she will, she's actually on the blanket. She's taking it off her arms a lot more now and her hands are becoming a lot more free right now. So I can tell she's getting, getting to the point to where she's not gonna need the blanket. And I know that the same, it would be the same with the pacifier. So we just hang out with it and it keeps her content for the most part. And so we just let her do her thing. So I think that that kind of covers the highlights of what's been going on with Isabel and what her little journey has looked like as of late. 
Um, I'm going to leave all the information in the description box below about the NIMCHEC protocol. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section below, find me on Facebook, whatever you need to do. I would love to help any families that feel like this might be um, an answer or a solution for themselves or for their child. I would love to help you on this journey. I just feel a huge sense of responsibility that that's what I'm supposed to do. And that is why I'm sharing it with you all. Um, that is why I kind of went into um, deep detail, if you will, on what the protocol is and what the products actually do, just because I kind of want to be able to give you a clearer picture of why this works and why this very simplistic method is just is life changing for so many people across across the board, across the world, everywhere. So thank y'all for joining. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do that now. And we will see y'all on Saturday with a new vlog. See you next time. Bye.